Hello everybody and welcome to the second in this series of videos where we're going to go ahead and install an IDE or an integrated development environment to work alongside Blender so it makes our life when it comes to coding so much easier. There are a few gotchas as we go along the way but I'll hold your hand as we go through the process. Now this is the Linux version of this video so if you're using Windows or Mac OS links in the description for those operating systems so you can follow along exactly rather than having to install interpret to another operating system. Okay, so let's dive straight in. Now Blender comes with a built-in text editor and we can see that in a couple of ways. We can change a workspace to the text editor itself or use Shift F11. So if I do that now, we get ourselves the text editor open up or we can go across, let me just set that back to the 3D viewport. We can go across to the scripting workspace that we already have. And when I first started working with scripts in Blender, I did everything exclusively in this text editor. However, as I've developed, I've realized the power of using an IDE complementing Blender really does accelerate your workflow. So we'll be spending a lot of time in the text editor, having a look over here on the left-hand side of the Python stuff that actually goes on in the background and using that to develop our scripts and eventually our add-ons as well. I'm going to assume that you guys don't have everything installed and ready to go, apart from Blender, of course. So we're gonna start with the basics and that's going to be installing VS Code. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so before we get started, I'm using Pop OS, which is a Debian distribution based upon Ubuntu. So what, I've, what I'm about to do here will pretty much work on any Debian distribution. Now, there are a couple of ways you can go ahead and install based upon what you've got. I'm gonna use the command line, but before we do that, one of the ways if you've got a built-in package manager is to go ahead and use that. If we type in VS Code here, we've got something, a one-click install button to get it installed, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we also have the option of going to the websites and downloading the particular packages and installing them from there. So if we go to VS Code, hopefully download Visual Studio Code, we can download in this case the Debian distribution and install it from there. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the terminal so I know exactly what's going on. I'm gonna close those two tabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the terminal. And whilst I'm here, there are a couple of things you may want to do before we get started. Now, Python and the VS Code actually talk to one another really well when it comes to the Linux operating system. So Python 3 dash dash version. And we're running 3.82. Absolutely fine. I think the most recent version is 3.83, but I'm not going to bother updating it at this point in time. The next thing that I will want to do is a sudo apt update. This just makes sure, if I can spell, that everything is up to date when it comes to any repositories. One package can be upgraded. So here we will do an upgrade as well. And one of the tips that I would uh, say here is if we put a dash Y at the end, it will automatically answer questions for us, which is really useful when it comes to the next bit. So to install both VS Code and Blender, you need Snap installed. So if I just type in Snap, um, we don't have it yet. We need to sudo apt install Snap D. Now, fortunately, uh, what we can do is highlight that and copy it. Now, if you're new to Linux and working in terminals, and this applies to the other operating systems as well, in order to copy something that's within the terminal, you can't go Control and C or Command and C on a Mac. We have to go Control Shift and C to copy. And then we can go Control Shift V to paste. Now, I find that really useful when it comes to large blocks of code if I've made a mistake or something along those lines. Again, I didn't put dash Y on the end. So I'm just gonna cancel that for the moment because I want to chain together a series of commands. Okay, so what we want to do at the same time, or certainly I want to do at this point, is I want to snap install Blender. I'm gonna go dash dash classic to install it. And then uh, you will probably want to do this one, which is snap install code dash dash classic. And these are instructions taken straight from uh, Microsoft's website as well, if you want to follow up. Links are all in the description for any resources that I've used during this as well. So I think that's everything that I need to do. I'm gonna press enter, type in my password and type in my password again. And it will take a few moments to download everything 
that we need. Of course, once that's done, this is one of the great things about this type of installation, it's pretty much hands off unless we need to type in any authentication. So we're gonna to need to do that as you've just seen. Uh, we're gonna to need to do it for code and Blender. And it does this on my VM for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Be back in a moment. So here we have Blender installing nice and quick, running at the full speed of my broadband. Again, if your system or your internet is a bit slow at the moment, especially in the current climate of the world, then just leave it to go through um, and then pop back periodically to have a look. Now this is quite quick and once it's finished downloading it, I'm going to have to type in my password again in order to authenticate the installation. Here we go. Let's go ahead and there we go. That's Blender installed, that simple. And now code, which is VS code, is now downloading as well. And there we go, we are all installed. Now I'm going to restart my operating system just to make sure that everything is installed correctly. You may or may not have to do this. My experience is in this particular um, case, maybe it's the VM, but I do have to restart the system. It won't take long though. <laughs> Okay, with it all restarted, we should be able to see both VS Code and Blender are installed. Brilliant. Let's go ahead now and open VS Code. Uh, with it open, I'm going to press Control and Plus to make the text all a bit larger. And let's go ahead and make it full screen. The first thing I'm going to do here, and this is my particular workflow. You can do it in various ways. But I'm going to go ahead and click the Explorer icon on the top left. Once I've done that, I'm going to open folder. In my documents, I think I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called Test. Uh, with that created, I'm going to click OK. VS Code will update and then we have a couple of icons again on the left hand side where we can create a new file and here I'm going to go test and I'm going to go .py. Automatically you can see the icons change there. It's going to become a Python file. And we're going to have a series of options coming up. The Python extension is recommended. So let's go ahead and click install. This will automatically open up the extensions on the left hand side and install Python for us. Great. That's all we need to do there, but I would also like you at this moment in time to install the Blender development. So type Blender into the search box there and go ahead and install it. And there we go, that's installing that bit as well, which should help us later on be able to really quickly test our code over in Blender, especially when it comes to the add-ons. I'm gonna close that down for the moment. We've got test PY here. Let's see what's working and what isn't. If we go ahead and type in import, that's looking good. If we type in math, it's auto-completing for us. This is the great thing. So I can type IM, press the tab key, MA, okay, probably a bit short there, but now I can go math.py. So that's auto-completing for us with Python straight away, which is really, really useful. Now we've got this error at the bottom here that the linter pylint is not installed. We can go ahead and click on install and we'll see here that there's no pip installer. We'll sort that out in a few moments. Let's first of all run a print function. So let's type in print and we're gonna print out math.py and make sure that everything on the Python side is working. So up on the top right here, we can play and here we go, it's printed out to the console, the number pi, excellent. And again, it's complaining about pilot. Now that the console's open, if you've managed to shut it down like so, what we can do is go up to terminal at the top and open up a new terminal. When we go ahead and do that, we can start typing some commands in. In this particular case, we want to install pip because it's not there at the moment. And in order to do that, we're going to sudo apt install Python, P-Y-T-H-O-N, I think it's dash pip, Python 3 dash pip, I apologize. And let's go ahead and type that in and it will take a few moments to install. Do you want to continue? Yes. I'm gonna close that down for the moment. Um, we can bring it back up in a, in a second with the bell icon down here. Uh, oh, no, it has disappeared. Don't worry, it will come back again or we can do it manually in a moment as well. Okay, so pip is installed. If we go ahead and save our test Python, there we go, it's come back. Let's install. That will do it automatically for us instead of having to type in the particular code there. Now we do have a warning here that I've highlighted that it's not on path. We're not gonna worry about that at the moment. It's not gonna affect what we are currently doing. Right, let's close that down. The next thing we want to be able to do is have this type of math 
got this auto completion working but with blender stuff now when you're working in blender you need to import let's get rid of everything else you need to import the blender python library so that is bpy then when we go bpy it's starting to auto complete because it knows about bpy being imported but when we go dot in order to access that library we don't get anything any auto completion happening so let's reopen them up our terminal so terminal here we go how do we go and get this well now we've got pip installed which i believe is pip3 on linux there we go that's working so pip3 install now we need to install something called fake bpy module and then dash 2.82 when we go ahead and do that, that's going to install, it's very quick, the autocompletes that we need. So let's come back here and go BPY, and if it's nice and quick, it can take a few moments to catch up and get sorted. Then we will see a list appear and we'll be able to start auto filling. If that doesn't work and you've tried going back a couple of times to try and invoke it, and it can take a few moments to do, what we can do here is just save our file, quit, and then reopen VS Code then usually what will happen we've got that we've installed the linter we can go bpy so let's go bpy dot and there we go we've got everything back in so then we can go ops uh, dot mesh dot and you might be thinking mike how do you know this well we'll start going through this process and learning about it in the future videos but for the moment we can go ahead and add in primitive monkey to our scene and that should add Suzanne the monkey to our scene. So let's go ahead and save that script and go have a look at it over in Blender. Okay, so this is a fresh install of Blender, so I'm going to just click next here, get rid of the splash screen. I'm going to go edit preferences and change my UI scaling, uh, which is under the interface tab here, to 1.5. It's going to be a bit easier for everybody else to see, not 13, 1.5. There we go. So we want to go along to the scripting workspace. Once we're in there, we can go ahead and open up in our documents. We've got our test, test PY. Now I'm going to delete or sacrifice my default cube. You'll notice there's a, a bit of a visual artifact there. I think that's the VM that's causing that, but never mind. Um, what we can do here is go along and run our script. Now, if you can't see any headers like this, or perhaps this bit at the top here, I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll across on our header. I'm going to hit run script and you can see the shortcut is Alt and P. And there we go. Suzanne the monkey has been spawned into our scene. Brilliant. So we're pretty much all done and ready to go. Well, I want to show you before we finish what happens when we go ahead and write something in here. So let's write a comment. So my first Blender script, which is quite an accomplishment, by the way. So congratulations. Now, if we go ahead and have a look at that over in VS Code, we see that it's not there. We do have to save it. So if we go ahead now and go Alt and S to save, and we do have to have our cursor, our mouse cursor in this screen, or we can go up to the top and go text save. We see the shortcut there is Alt and S. Then when we go back over here, we can see it's my first Blender script. And I'm gonna add yay on the end and save it again in VS Code. You'll notice it's slightly different when it's the other way around. In a few moments when we activate this window, we see at the top here, we've got a little red folder and there's a conflict. What Blender is seeing is not the same as what's been saved on the disk. So we can go ahead, click that and reload from disk. And then we get our yay coming in as well. Okay, perfect. Well, congratulations, guys. You're all set up now and ready to go. If you have any questions or queries, of course, ask them down in the comments or any suggestions as well. And of course, if you've liked the video, hit like. If you want to see the next ones in the series, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.